Hi everyone, just got a very quick video for today in which I wanted to point out an interesting fact about the propagation of waves on a transmission line. Now a couple of videos back we derived this equation, um, which is the wave equation that describes how voltage and current waves propagate uh, along a transmission line. Well really voltage waves, but the current follows the same equation. Um, I've set the resistance of our transmission line uh, to zero here, just to simplify things. So this, these are undamped waves that we've got. Now there is one immediate conclusion that you can make about the wave speed just by comparing this with the sort of standard generic form of the wave equation, which is that this coefficient of the second spatial derivative, 1 over LC, um, is the squared speed of the waves. So I'm just going to make a note of that because it's going to be sort of the focus of the video. The wave speed is therefore, I guess let's give it a symbol, let's call it u. Um, it's 1 over uh, the square root of LC, where L and C, remember, are the inductance and capacitance per unit length of the transmission line. That's fairly straightforward if you know the wave equation. What's not straightforward is the actual numerical value of that wave speed. Now something interesting happens when we start considering specific types of transmission line and plugging in expressions for L and C. So let's just consider a couple of different specific geometries that you could construct your uh, transmission line in. And the first case I'm going to consider is a pair of thin parallel wires, because this is a case that I've done a couple of videos on already um, in previous videos on the channel. Uh, we've derived expressions for L and C for a pair of thin parallel wires. Uh, by thin here, I mean that we're assuming the, uh, the radius of the wires is much less than their separation. But anyway, the results, which I'm going to quote because I've derived them before, uh, are that the inductance per unit length is mu naught over pi times natural log of d divided by a, where d is the separation between the centers of the two wires, and a is the radius of each wire, which is assumed to be small. Um, and the other thing that we derived before was the capacitance per unit length, which is pi epsilon naught um, over the natural log of d over a, where d and a have the same meanings. Now, you can already maybe spot something that's going to happen, which is interesting, when we multiply L and C together, um, because you've got this log term here, and you've got the same log term on the denominator of your capacitance. So if you do L times C, uh, the logs will cancel out, the pi's will also cancel out, and you will just get mu naught epsilon naught, which is interestingly independent um, of the specific parameters of your transmission line. So that of course means that the speed of propagation of waves is 1 over the square root of mu naught epsilon naught, um, which is actually the speed of light, right? This is a, a known, well-established relationship between fundamental constants mu naught epsilon naught and c. And so we conclude that on a transmission line made of a pair of thin parallel wires, uh, your, your voltage and current waves propagate at the speed of light. Now this result sort of points us towards the fact that although until now we've been describing transmission line waves as voltage waves and current waves, what they really are is just a pair of pieces of conducting material um, that act as a wave guide for electromagnetic waves in free space, right? Like there is an oscillating electromagnetic field uh, between the two wires, and we know that electromagnetic waves propagate at speed c in, in free space. Of course, in reality, you don't have a vacuum between your conductors, and so um, you will have relative permeability and relative permittivity uh, entering your equation as well, slowing down the waves a bit. Um, you'll also have some resistance, of course, which also reduces the speed a bit. Um, but under all these uh, assumptions, um, the waves propagate the speed of light. Now, let's check whether this is unique to the case of thin parallel wires and consider an alternative geometry. The other kind of most common transmission line, as far as I know, uh, is the coaxial cable. So let's think about this coaxial cable. And if you don't know, by the way, a coaxial cable is basically a cylindrical conductor surrounded by another hollow cylindrical conductor. So it's like a cylinder inside a cylinder. They share an axis, which is why it's called coaxial. Now, I haven't derived these results on my channel before. Um, I'm going to just quote them here because they're very well established and you can look up, look up a derivation. If anyone wants me to do a video deriving them, let me know and I can do that. But for now, let's just quote them. The inductance of a coaxial cable is mu naught over 2 pi, natural log of b over a, where b and a 
of the radii of your outer and inner cylindrical conductors respectively and the capacitance per unit length is 2 pi epsilon naught divided by again log of b over a where the b and the a are the radii of your cylinders and you'll notice that exactly the same thing happens right like you, you've got the log terms on the top of l but the bottom of c they'll cancel when you multiply them together you've also got 2 pi um, on the top and the bottom that will cancel you get b naught epsilon naught again and for a coaxial cable Again, assuming there's no resistance, assuming that the conductors are separated by a vacuum, you get that U is equal to C again. And you can check for yourself that the same fact uh, is true for other geometries. For example, I know it's definitely true for strip line, which is basically a transmission line, um, where your conductors are flat sheets of metal, which are commonly used in technological applications, printed circuit boards, um, and there are surely others as well. Um, and so this is a, a general feature of the propagation of waves on transmission lines. So I hope this has been interesting and uh, thanks for watching. See you soon.